<laughs> oh, I am, I am so good at this game. You guys have no idea. Um, so last time I, I, uh, I got the bad, bad ending again. Surprise, surprise. So we're just, we're just, uh, we're just, yeah, we're just, we're just gonna go. Uh. I'm just gonna skip ahead and leave that all behind. All that sad ending parts. Oh boy. Alright, what do we need here? Um, I think it was... I think it doesn't even matter. I don't even know why they give this choice. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, ask, why are you Aquarius? This because I'm a Ice Princess. Uh, three good deeds. What happens if I don't break the curse? It doesn't matter. Once I turn 18, I become the TV bear. Why are you two working together? Because they're the best of friends. Uh, this doesn't really matter because we're not going for Rod currently. Uh, throw the tray at him. And then we get to go to our first choice. It's gonna be Rumpel, yay! Cause we like it. We like the doctors. We'll go Rumpel again. Oh my god! All right. So good at this game, guys. You have no idea. Rumpel, yay! The flatter, hooray! Chapter three. <sighs> Um, turn and walk away. I just remembered I have something to do. I turn around to start walking away, but I'm con immediately stopped when I feel Rumpel's hand on my shoulder. I slap his hand away. Fierce as always, you remind me of a rose with thorns, princess. He leans closer and winks at me. But the thorns are what make the rose so alluring. Are you always so persistent? Or do you actually want me to slap you again? Your slapping me is just a small blockade on the road. I will never give up on you, princess. Does he enjoy you when I purposely try to ignore him? The most brilliant sparkling gems are buried deep within the ground and take much effort to unearth. What? Princess, you are like one of those gems. No, I am not like a gem. Rappel, why would you deal with someone like her? What? Lucet is like a budding flower and I can do my best to help her bloom in whatever way I can. And the next choice is... Slap him! Let go of me! Rampel's eyes crease with worry as he holds tightly to my hand. The sadness in his eyes becomes anxiety and I see something like fear dancing in his eyes. You really think it was my fault? The look in his eyes is so vacant, almost like he is looking through me. It's as if he's in kind of some in some kind of trance. The way he looks at me makes my skin crawl. His grip on my hand tightens, making me shudder. Rather than slap his hand away, I reach out with my free hand and slap his face. I stare perplexed at the sudden bafflement on Rumpel's face. Did this slap to the knock to the face knock him out of the strange trance? He's being even scary. Even stranger than normal, and the intensity of the look in his eyes is scaring me. Rumpel stares at me for a few moments, blinking slowly. Oh no, I blanked out. I'm sorry, princess. What just happened to him? The way he was speaking was so strange. Almost like he was in some kind of trance. But I know how people are. They lie, and they put on some faces. I'm sorry for speaking, spacing out. If I invaded your space, then I am sorry. You're apologizing? Rumpel puts a hand on his cheek where I slapped him. I think I deserve that. Thank you for getting me out of... wherever that was. All at once, the sheepish smile breaks into something cheerful again. And... skip! Don't accept the gift. I cannot accept your gift! But princess, my advice! You have no reason to spoil me. 
Princess, this is what I've been trying to explain to you all day. You don't need a reason to spoil someone. It doesn't always have to be about paying someone back. Rumpel smiles a little sheepishly, then he places a bag in my hand and curls my fingers around it. You deserve nice things, princess. You barely know me, and yet you still say that. Barely know you. We may not know... Uh, we may not have known each other personally, but I, that doesn't mean I don't know enough about you. I am giving you this gift because I truly want you to have it. Besides, this is both a thank you and an apology gift. A thank you for accepting me as your partner and an apology for my behavior yesterday. I don't remember what I did, but both, of, both you and the boy seemed frightened. And we are in chapter 5. Oh my god, we have to flirt. I, I can't, I can't do this one, I'm sorry. Apologize. Tell him off. Why did you have to be so dramatic when you gave me that compliment? I was dramatic. I crossed my arms and Rumpel grins at me. Can't help it, princess. I am dramatic by nature. A compliment is, in some ways, a performance. So you did not mean what you said. Oh, got him. N no, I did. I swear I did. I was trying to show you how making a good person happy could be a good deed. Complimenting a person on appearance is easier than complimenting them on their demeanor. You have to know a person for that. I meant what I said, princess. And I swear that I wasn't... That wasn't me, just me trying to weave spectacular words together. Earlier, I bet you made Anis happy too, by apologizing to her. Stop walking. I instantly root myself in place, and even though Rumpel is far taller than me and far stronger, he stops after noticing that I am no longer walking. Oh princess, do you want to stop and admire the scenery? What are you attacking me here for? I don't care about scenery, and I don't care about walking anywhere with you. Ah, oh, princess, your honesty really is a treasure. One day, I will make it so you enjoy going places with me, not just holding my hand. Whoa, alright. I quickly slide my hand out of his, my face feeling somewhat hot. Ah, there is a sweet rosiness in your cheeks. You never answered my question. It's a detour. We were only going to be here for a few moments. If you thought you saw someone's eyes catch you, it's better to divert that attention away from the Martian. And before you say it's dangerous, yes, it is. But we're still not far enough away from town to worry about safety. And I believe I can protect you. Want to compliment my cleverness, sweet princess? He takes a step forward, bridging a short distance between us, then suddenly his fingers are around my wrist again. But he does not lace his fingers through mine, instead he takes my hand in his, and then pulls his face close to mine. Before I realize it, my hand is on his cheek, my his, his hand cupping my own. And there's that. I could try visiting him, or I could go back to my room. Go to Rumpel's room. And that's what we did. Defend Rumpel. Rumpel tells me that he never lies. He tells me that he wants me to trust him. Though I still find it hard to believe, I do not do want to trust him. I walk down the rest of these stairs and stop at Rumpel's side. Both men look at me equally surprised to see me there. Rumpel has never lied to me yet. Karma looks at and stares at me for a few moments looking startled by my sudden appearance, then he sighs. Princess, a man that flat flatters everyone doesn't flatter anyone. At least he's not so conceited, he flatters himself constantly. Oh damn. Such a sharp tongue you have, princess. And you are very quick to jump to assumptions. You two are at it again. I didn't accept Thank you, princess. For what? For defending me. 
I swear I meant what I said. I would never lie to you. I meant every one of my compliments. Every one of my thank yous. You must know that, since you came to defend me. Rampel, sometimes you continue ta talking when nothing needs to be said. But I am just expressing the depths of my gratitude. It's not necessary. It was such a small thing, too. Princess, can you help me with some of the inventory? Yes, I can. I'm still his partner. Reconsider. I cannot just excuse someone, even if Briev is guilty of something. I step away from the fountain, meaning to head back the way I came. Even if this situation sounds wrong, I feel that Rumpel would hate me getting involved. I am surprised when he calls my name. Princess? What are you doing here? Uh... He saw me? Did he know I was behind the fountain? Wait, why would you say this and not think it? Spying our... Uh, spying are we? I make my way over to the table to where Rumpel is looking at me with worry and Bria is openly scowling at me. Is there something wrong, Miss Parker? Not with me, but perhaps with you. Excuse me? You seem to have quite the reputation. Oh, no matter what. Uh... Remain silent. My problems? Why would he want to know about my problems? I understand what it's like, Princess, to have a secret stuck inside of you. I want to keep things to yourself, or to want to things, to want to keep things to yourself because you're worried that someone will prove you wrong. But you can always talk to me about it. Why are you so interested in my problems? I told you before that the best thing you can do is to listen to a person. That's why you learn to sympathize. Besides, I honestly, I honestly care about you. I, I'll, I will always listen to you, princess. Rampel slowly reaches out to rest his hand on top of mine. I sit up straight and stare at him with my eyes wide. Rampel smiles at me, a slow, soft smile that crinkled, crinkles the edges of his eyes. Seeing such a beautiful lady close to tears makes my heart break, you know. But if you ever need to cry, you should. Tears aren't a weakness. They're just a form of expression. Even the strongest of us cry. Next. Struggle? Cannot just let him carry me like this. I attempt to move away from him, but my whole body is weak. It is all I can do to try and roll out of his arms, but even that does not work. If you fall, you'll get a bump on your head, you know. I... I'm not weak. I don't need anyone to take care of me. There are voices and indistinct chattering behind... Oh, excuse me! Oh, that was disgusting. Sorry. There are voices and indistinct chattering behind them that belongs to the girls. Rumpel speaks in a low voice. Stubborn may she may be, but my sweet princess is stronger than any other woman I have ever known. He pulls me closer to him, and I feel his chest on my head, then his heartbeat. I know you are strong, princess. Stronger than anyone else, even. But because you are so strong, I know you'll never admit to needing help. That's why I'm going to help you without your permission. I'm sorry. Slowly, I let myself settle in his arms. I lean my head into his chest and listen to his heartbeat. It is a gentle, sweet sound that makes me feel like drifting into slumber. So warm. Ah, but it's not as warm as you are right now, princess. His voice slowly begins to fade out as I close my eyes. Look away. There he goes again with his compliments. I should be used to them right now. But lately, whenever he compliments me, I cannot stop myself from feeling flattered. When I look into his eyes, I can almost see my ver mer I can almost see my reflection in them. Without realizing, I look away from him, feeling my breath stop short before I can breathe out. Are you sick, princess? You look a little flushed. Princess? He removes his finger. He does not, however, step back. I'm still aware of his lips so close to mine and his eyes, which are 
still looking right at me. This feels different than your usual resistance. Could it be that you're embarrassed? He clears his throat, then starts speaking again. <clears throat> in any case, it's so nice to have you back, princess. I missed you while you were sleeping day in and out. You missed me? But you have friends all over the Martian. Uh, thanks. Leave the room. I love you. But I'm not... Whether you're Rumpel or Chevalier, you are the same person. You do not need to be a knight or a prince. He accepted me for who I was. And he still does. Mother told me that humans were untrustworthy, but... Chevalier smiles at me as he puts his other hand on my back and pulls me closer. The smile in this... The smile is so genuine and so gentle. The same smile that I have grown to love. Kiss. Yay. Lighting's a little weird, but that's okay. Ask all the questions. Uh, I want to help. Chevalier wraps his, uh, we did do this choice, the neck. Somehow Nish got this right. It is scream for help. Where to go Nish? It's nice to meet you. Not like mother. Oh my God, we did it. <laughs> 